So this is our last section of chapter 3. 3.9 is about the derivatives of exponentials and logarithmic functions. Um, they're both pretty straightforward, so I don't think they're going to cause you much in the way of problems. Um, but uh, I don't know, let me just show you the rules. So what's really cool about the uh, exponential function when dealing with that e to the x, e to the x's derivative is just e to the x. No change. e to the x's derivative is e to the x. But if e to the x has a function in it, it becomes a chain rule. So you'll see, what does e to the x do? Nothing. So it stays e to the g of x. But what do you have to do for a chain rule? Multiply by the derivative of the thing that's stuck inside. So if we have e to the stuff, then the derivative is just e to the stuff times the derivative of the stuff. Okay? So that is the main thing to know. The derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. The derivative of e to a function of stuff is e to the stuff times the derivative of the stuff. Okay? So it is a perfect example of a chain rule. We do what e does, nothing, and then we multiply by the derivative of the function inside. So if we want to find a derivative of e to the tangent of 2x, the derivative of that is just going to be e to the tangent of 2x, but we have to multiply by the derivative of that function, that, that stuff that is up in the power. So we're just going to multiply by the secant squared of 2x, times the derivative of the stuff inside. So this was a double chain. So the derivative of 2x is 2. Now don't forget the 2 that is important. Okay. So that is the answer. Uh, if you want to make it a little clearer, you could put you know, that stuff in some kind of bracket. But there you go. That is the derivative of our first one. For 375, so if we're going to find y prime, first thing I would do is probably rewrite. Well, yeah, we'll just do it as a quotient. Let's see what it comes up with. So if we see this, this is a quotient uh, rule option. You could have rewritten it as x to the negative 1 times, but it's still product rule. So that's why I'm like, eh, let's just leave it. So we're, yeah, it's still yucky one way or the other. Let's do our, um, our uh, profit, or quotient rule. So it's the bottom times the derivative of the top. Well, the derivative of e to the x squared is e to the x squared times the derivative of x squared, which is 2x, minus the top, e to the x squared, times the derivative of the bottom, which is just 1, all over the bottom squared. Now, when you use a quotient rule with an e, um, that e thing is something uh, that you could... Um, simplify out. Normally I don't do a lot of simplification when I show you, but I want to show you something that happens with this. Eventually, especially when we start chapter 4, we are going to have to contemplate how these things can simplify a little bit. You will notice that both this term and this term contain an e to the x squared because the derivative of e to the x squared contains e to the x squared, so you're going to have that. And so I'm going to remove that and let's think about what's left. We have a 2x squared minus 1. And that's good to leave it like that. That's not a bad way to leave it. We could also even kind of split it up a little bit further. If we divide both of these pieces by x squared and distribute again, uh, you would get uh, 2, 2 e to the x squared minus e to the x squared over x squared. So you can do a little bit of simplification. There's not much, but a little bit. And there you go. That is the derivative there. Again, for, for our purposes, probably for this uh, chapter, here's good. What's coming here's a little better. Even this version isn't bad. But. So any questions about those ones? Make sense, Ken?
So let's take a look at a uh, application problem. So exponentials, remember, are uh, come up a lot in business and also in biology. Those are the two uh, types of things that you'll see a lot when related to exponentials. So here is about a population of um, mosquitoes. And they have a population function. This is after t days. The population is given by 1,000 e to the 0.3t. So the rate of change of population, A um, prime, uh, they say uh, A sub 2 is a constant. So let's, let's mess with that. So if we do the derivative, uh, what would we get? Well, we would get 1,000 um, E to the 0.3t times the derivative of 0.3t, which is just 0.3. So you'll notice that the derivative just ends up being a 0.3 constant times the original function. So the rate of change is 0.3 times the original function. So there is, that's all they were talking about. <laughs> so this does mean happening every time you do Yeah, so if, if, if we do the second derivative, it would be another 0.3, and another <coughs> derivative would be another 0.3. It would just keep... Multiplying by factors of 0.3. In, in a way. Uh huh. Yeah. And, and when there's a, uh, when it, when there is a, just a T, some, some uh, multiple of T up in your power, that number there is just the only thing that would ever change for every derivative you take, whether it's the first, second, third. Now, now let's talk about logarithms. So if we take the derivative of the natural log, we're going to get 1 over x. Now the reason, if, think about the fact that um, that ha is an x to the negative 1, but the natural log's derivative is 1 over x. So you can write it as 1 over x or x to the negative 1, whichever helps you. Now again, if there's a function stuck inside, what do you do? Well, it's 1 over that function times the derivative function. So it's just like we have done before. So it's just a perfect chain. you just got to remember the fact natural logs derivative is 1 over x. And then if it's a natural log of a function, just follow the chain rule and you'll be okay. So let's do a natural log. So if you see the natural log of a function, then it's just going to be, its derivative is just going to be 1 over that function times the derivative of the function. So uh, the derivative of that is 3x squared plus 3. Now, you could also rewrite that as 3x squared plus 3 over x squared plus 3x minus 4. That works as well. We are maybe going to eventually have to do something about, you know, that function and, you know, maybe where it is equal to 0 and where, you know, but for now, um, you know, first steps are important. Yes, yeah, that's, oh, it should be a third, thank you, I'm so sorry. That looks a little better, though. I think I just couldn't read my own handwriting through thick. <laughs> so there you go, there is that example. Any questions about that one? Sometimes, if they're factorable, you could possibly reduce it, but they, these are not, uh, at least the top isn't factorable and you need good factors. So. so any questions about that one? Okay. So let's do a gross one. So here 
this is really kind of interesting what happens. Since it's fractional, now I'm going to write it one way, but then it will fix it. It's 1 over that fraction times the derivative of the fraction. Well, the derivative of the fraction, let's use the uh, quotient rule. So it is the bottom times the derivative of the top, which requires a product rule because it's x squared times sine of x. So it's the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. Okay, let's see here. I think I ran out of room. Let's scooch this over. <laughs> and then it's going to be minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. Now I'm going to put this in brackets. And I'm not going to try really to simplify it much. There might be some ways to simplify it. I'm not so, so worried. But I do want to talk about this. 1 over a fraction is just a reciprocal of that fraction. So just flip it over. So that really becomes 2x plus 1 over x squared sine of x. Now, watch what happens. Something interesting. So look at what happens. There is one of them here and the one of them there. So it can cancel. Now this is a term and this is a term. Not every term contains an x squared sine of, sine of x. So you can't delete it. But if you distributed and things simplified in such a way you might have been able to to simplify it but you could simplify it probably a little bit but here you're going to end up with 2x plus 1 well let's actually do that because I know that's so bad but <laughs> so if we distribute we're going to get 2x cubed so I'm going to distribute this one first 2x so we're going to get 2x cubed cosine of x 4x squared sine of x, x squared cosine of x, 2x sine of x. And then we're going to get minus 2x squared sine of x. And then all over an x squared sine of x times a 2x plus 1. Okay, everything looked good? Yeah, it's gross, but <laughs> still kind of neat how it ends up working out. Okay, so that is the natural log of something disgusting. Okay, now because of the rules of logarithms and the change of base formula, What's really interesting is if we have a log base b, and it's the log base b of x, then it's just 1 over x, like a natural log, but it's times the natural log of b, whatever our base is. So the same thing would think about if you, you know, applied the chain rule to that. It'd be g of x, natural log of b, d prime. And then it kind of, uh, the natural log appears again, if we do b of x instead of e of x, it's just b of x, but we have to account for that change of base, so that's at times the natural log of b. So it's all about how logarithms work and how they're related back to e. And there's a change of base formula that helps.
So this one down here, so is this the third? Yeah. Okay, so, so look, so think about what we know. If we have e to the x, it just becomes e to the x, it doesn't change. So you'll notice b to the x is still there. Still b to the x is still a b to the x, but you need to multiply by the natural log of b to counteract the fact that it's not an e base, it's a b base. There's a change base formula, and um, if you have the, the, the log base b of x, that's the same as the natural log of x over the natural log of b. Yeah. So, so it's all about that change of base formula. Technically what's happening is you're kind of changing the base and doing it, and then look, you would have, this would just be a number, <coughs> and, then, and then this would just be one over x, and you're counteracting that. So, so it's just a, a counteracting of the change of base formula. So if we look at this, we're going to use the quotient rule, so that's one thing to keep in mind. So let's put the bottom in parentheses. Okay. We're going to use the, the quotient rule, but every time we take the derivative of 3 to the x, let's just kind of do that part. The derivative of, if we call f of x 3 to the x, the derivative of that is 3 to the x natural log of 3. Natural log of 3 is just a number, so it's just a constant. And it's just counteracting the fact that that isn't a base e anymore. Because the natural log of e would be 1, so if, it, if that formula works actually for any logarithm. It actually works for any log Or any base. Okay. okay, so let's do the derivative. Yeah, feel free to just leave natural log there, uh, back behind it, and I'll know that's just a number when you multiply. Okay, so the bottom times the derivative of the top, which we just know is another 3 to the x, but times natural log of 3, minus the top times the derivative of the bottom. Well, 3 to the x is going to do it again. 3 to the x natural log of 3. The derivative of 2 is 0 and then the bottom square. So these would usually have, you know, look, every single term has a 3 to the x natural log of 3. I mean, it's just there. It's, it's going to show up quite often. Let me see what they said this one. But I wouldn't worry right now about simplification. How would you simplify it? Well, I, you could distribute this to both of those, distribute this to that, see what's there, do you have any like terms, you know, so that would be. There's lots of threes there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I wrote that down wrong. See, I got carried away with the threes there, you know, that's a two. Like yes. <laughs> Where should I draw? Where should I draw? Any questions about that one? I mean, you notice we're following the same rules. We're just add more to it. Now, how do you find the slope of a tangent line? Well, you're going to do the same things we've done so far. You're going to find the first derivative. You're going to plug it in to find plug the point in to find the slope of the tangent. Then you're going to do y minus y1 equals n times x minus x1. No change. It's just now we have some lovely rules of logarithms that we have to deal with. Okay. So... First, let's plug, find the point. They gave us x equals 1, but what's the y value? So if we do the y value, the log base 2, now 3 times uh, 1 is 3, 3 plus 1 is 4. So let's remember how logs work. The log base 2 of 4 is really asking, what power do I put on a 2 to change it to a 4? So the answer is 2. So this is the point 1, 2 that we're dealing with. I always like, what's my point? Okay, so the first step is to find y prime. So for a logarithm, remember, it's 1 over the inside function, so 1 over 3x plus 1 
times the natural log of our base. And the natural log of our base is the natural log of 2. So that's just the derivative of that. It's always 1 over the function. And if the base is anything but a natural log, you just uh, tack on a natural log of that base. Now, the second step is to actually find the slope of our tangent by plugging in the x they were talking about. So that's 1 over 4 times the natural log. So that's our slope. So the next phase, I wouldn't ask you to simplify because it's just too disgusting. So the actual slope or the uh, equation. Oh, they just said to find the slope. Well, we're just going to keep going. Anyway. <laughs> we've, we've committed. We're going to keep going. <laughs> so it's going to be 1 minus 2 equals that gross slope times x minus 1. And again, if they just say to find the slope of the tangent, we're done with step 2. That's technically a good one. But, uh, you know, I'm not to keep going. And then your assignment is that. So, uh, all of the problems, 331 to 341. And I will probably post the answers to the even ones, because the odd ones, obviously, you can check yourself. Maybe, maybe I'll just put the uh, even ones up in the middle. There you go. Now you get to do some math.